Hey guys, Jamie here, and in this video I'm going to show you how I make this piece from start to finish in Aspire and then generating the G-code and then cutting it out of the machine. All right, so I've got an expire pulled up here, and I'm going to create a new file. Now, I know I want my little sign to be, well, let's see, 12 inches by 6 inches. That looks pretty good. I know that my material is the, um, I'm using the sign foam, and I have this, uh, I have this 2 inch thick sign foam that I'll probably use, but I really don't want the so the Mr. and Mrs. piece to be uh, more than an inch so I'm gonna make this an inch thick and that way I'll just cut my sign foam in half on the bandsaw or something alright so we'll say OK and you can have it you can change where you want it centered like you can say you want it centered in the lower left uh, or in the middle um, sometimes I like to do the middle because it's it's easier to just Pick the middle of a, a big block of, of material if you don't have something that's perfectly square or if you're doing something that's you know on a round piece of wood or um, sometimes it's just easier to find the middle um, than it is to, to try and register the lower left um, this this one it's either way it doesn't really matter um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go lower left all right so first we need some text so we're gonna take some text and we're going to say Mr. and Mrs. Um, that looks pretty good. Of course, you can pick all the different fonts. And the, the key with this is to, to pick the right font. Um, you need something that's thick. Something, of course, with this, you know, the scrolly text is probably the best. Um, and I kind of like this Alex Brush one, uh, but let's just take a look and see what might else what else might be good. See, that's no good. Um, see, that wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't be bad. But you got to connect. Everything has to be connected to to each other. Or um, in this case, I'm going to use a uh, a square base so I can really pick any font I want um, that was not too bad also too like a lot of times I like to use bold so that it's nice and thick um, that's and everything it should be on like should be able to, to have them all at the bottom, straight straight line at the bottom. Um, doesn't and you can adjust you can adjust the text, but if it's this way already, it's it's just going to be easier. Um, I mean, if you've got a font that you have to use, um, if the if if your uh, customers say, you know, I really like this font, then you know you, you don't have much choice. Uh, you just got to make it work. All right, so I'm going to go back to the Alex brush. I like the Alex brush. Yeah, I could make that work. So bold, and it, it, the the size of the letters doesn't really matter because you can resize it once we're done. Like here, I can just go and resize. Right. <coughs> All right. So one of the first things we got to do is is convert these to curves, and then we have to get rid of stuff like this here. Which is the, you know, where, where the fonts, you know, where either where you made a bold or <clears throat> something like that. It always creates these little weird um, things that, that are going to really cause a problem with your machining because it's going to think it's got to go inside of that and clear that out. So I just use the little uh, trim tool and I just I just clip these. So I look. 
And I get rid of all. See, like this thing, we don't really need that. That it can't even machine inside of there, so um, might as well get rid of that. Get rid of that. These we have to join together. Um, I also like. I don't like this, so what I usually do is I'll take and I'll move these letters over so it looks like it's more straight line. And then I'll trim. Just I think it looks a little bit better. You could also go in. See, here's another one. These little things will cause problems. You got to be careful. Like I'm clicking and nothing happens. But if I go out, sometimes see I've cut off. Trying to trying to trim that, I, I've cut off part of that. When you're zoomed way in and you don't see, and nothing happens, when you click and nothing happens, you've probably cut something off. So um, before we're done, we'll join all the all the vectors. It's like this is probably a separate vector. No, it's probably a good good. So a lot of times it's a it's just it's not really there either. See that wasn't really there. So let's see is that one? See something like this, you can go into node editing mode, which is this one, and you can smooth this point, and then you can adjust handles to make that look a little bit better. And same same with this one. It's like I don't like that big bump. So sometimes I will just hit the point and I will delete it. You can right click and say delete, or you can hit D and then I'll smooth this one out. Actually there's two here. So I'll get rid of one of these. And then I'll smooth this one. And that looks a lot better. You can also bump these nodes, like if you don't want to move them with, with the mouse. You can use the arrow keys on the keyboard, and sometimes that just bump it slightly until, until it looks good. And then you can smooth. This one's already smooth, so you can just adjust the handles to smooth it. That looks fine. And you could connect these. Like I could take this points. Move them up into here. So this is just, these are kind of optional. Make it look a little better. These points here will move up just to smooth them out. Oops, that didn't look very good. And then we trim. And if you if you good out of node editing mode, you can hit N, and then we'll get you back into it. So I'm just kind of trying to smooth this out, make it look better. Hit F to frame the whole thing. So now it's, it actually doesn't look too good, but we can keep adjusting. If the project you're doing is worth the effort, then it's always a good idea to do it smooth. This one. So it's already smooth. So if it's already smooth, then you can, you can just adjust the handles to smooth it out a little bit more. Maybe bump it up just a notch. Same thing over here. Let's connect these two. And then we trim. Then we smooth. So it's it's a lot of it's a lot of process, but 
Um, I think in the end it will help. It'll make it look better. Make this one thicker. bit just the handle and then so one of the last things I do is I guess got a notating mode I highlight all of the text and I use this curve fit and you can see where all the little points are and sometimes they're too close to each other, or sometimes they're not very good. And I'll switch to these Bezier curves, and then I can do a preview, and you can see it kind of smooths everything out, right? But then that gives me some some really nice nice lines and some nice. If I went back into node editing mode, everything's kind of um, reset, if you will. Um, but normally I don't have to do anything else. I think that looks fine. Um, you can also, if this isn't thick enough for you, you can highlight it all and you can do an offset vectors. And then what I like to do is if I just want a little bit thicker, I'll pick a really small amount in the distance. I'll tell it to delete the original, select the new, and then you can just hit it a couple times until you get it to where you like the thickness. If that makes sense. And then we will scrunch these together a little bit. Oops. All right. And then we can make it bigger again. All right. And then I said I was going to put a base on the bottom of this. So for that, I'm just going to draw a rectangle so right about here. And oops, try that again. That's probably good. And then we're going to move it up so that it hits all the letters. Almost. That's hitting all the letters. So another thing we can do is we can move this guy up a little bit. This guy down a little bit. Oops. That looks pretty good. And then we trim. Oh, I didn't actually make it there. So actually, probably what I'll do is, since since it's already pretty low for this one, um, I'll do the same thing I did with the other. I'll go into node editing mode. I'll just kind of drop this a little bit, just so that I can connect these pieces. Um, it'll be more stable. Get rid of this. All this stuff. Um, sometimes, too, these extra little pieces, you can just highlight and delete them. And that was, this thing right here, like, the bit won't even get in here. So you don't really have to worry about these super small areas or these real tight areas because the, the bit will be uh, uh, eight eighth of an inch. So if I went in the circle, right, that's the size of my bit. So it it's only going to be able to get to, you know, something like here before it has to turn around and go back. So this will be fine. Let me make another circle if I did. All right, let's continue to trim. I think there was one more of this guy here I want to connect because you don't really want this 
dangling off because it'll be easy to break. So we're going to go into node editing mode. We're going to just highlight the bottom of these. I don't need this one. And we're just going to drop it down a little bit just so it touches. And smooth this out. Actually, back, undo, 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 undo. I select this whole thing and drop it down easier. Oops, I missed them. So we'll go here. Add these. We're gonna add these. Fine. I'm just going to notice and then trim these. All right, so I think all my pieces are connected. Some things you're not going to be able to connect. I could probably try to connect these two together. Um, I think we'll see how that goes. Um, it is pretty, you know, inch thick, so it's not going to be too fragile. But if you were doing this in like MDF or something like a quarter quarter inch MDF or even something that's even thinner. Um, this would be a very fragile piece right here. Um, all right, so I'm going to drop this thing down to the bottom. Oops. If you if you if you draw your mouse this way from top left to bottom right, you only will get what's in your selection range. Like so, if I go here, I will get it all. If I go from the bottom right to the top left, you'll get anything that it touches. So I, I, I need to get into the habit of doing it this way so that I get better selection. I'm going to drop this to the bottom. And then I can adjust my material. That's got to be about 3 inches. Maybe 2.5. And this doesn't really matter because, I mean, I can put whatever, whatever material down that I want. But now I can know when I go out in the garage, if I have a piece that's 2.5 inches uh, wide and 12 inches long. Um, I don't have to search for something that's six inches. Um, so, okay. All right. So now we just got to machine this. So we're going to highlight everything. Go into our tool paths. I like to pin it. And then we're going to do an, a profile. Actually, we have some internal ones. So we're going to pick the internal ones first. And I don't think sometimes you have to do this, but I like to make sure I'm doing the internal ones first. Come on. Oh, see, that one's not joined. So we're going to have to select these. I think it's J. Let's see, it's two open vectors. Now it's going to be one. So you got to pay attention to that, that you have closed vectors. Otherwise, when you go to machine it, it'll, it'll cry about open vectors and it won't know what to do. So this is one. Well, these are all two. So this is two. See, so open two. So I'm going to join them. Go here. Join. Go here. Join. So this happened when I cut everything. So this one's good. Just get one, one closed vector. Uh, this one is fine. This one is fine. That one's fine. These are now good. That one's good. And then this one, I think I said, no, I did that one. And this one? No, we're good. Okay. I think that's it. So you have to make sure everything's joined together. Um, then we're going to repick these internal ones. That's it. And then we're going to machine. We're going to do a profile toolpath. We're going to do the inside of these. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill. 60s, you know, 60s is good. It's it's uh it's actually sign foam, so I could probably go a lot faster. But I can bump that up in Mach 3 uh, right there at the machine. So I don't really have to mess with this too much. 
So we're going to have to say OK. Actually, but this one I will change here. It's like six passes. I don't need six passes. Sign phone machines like super easy. So a lot of times I'll bump this down and, and go down even more because it's like it's just machines like butter. I never really go all the way through um, just because I don't want to push it. So two or three, four is probably good. Um, and four is fine. I think four would be nice and quick anyway. So we'll go four, keep it, keep it somewhat safe. And we're gonna call this insides. Um, I don't need you could add tabs if you want to. I generally don't add the tabs um, unless it's like uh, something that uh, is super thin or is super flimsy because um, it's just a pain in the butt to, to chop off the tabs. So we'll calculate those. I don't need to preview that yet. Now we pick the outside. It should be all one piece. Oh, it's not one piece, so we're going to join these vectors. This one, this one, and we're going to hit J. It's three open vectors. After we're done, we are one, one closed vector. Now I can pick the outside. It should select everything. And we'll do a profile toolpath. This time we're doing the outside. Same end mill, but I'm going to want to edit my passes down to four. Just to save me a little bit of time. We're going to call this outside calculate. Now I will preview all toolpaths. And so I missed the setting. I didn't go all the way through. So let's see. Let's go in here. Oh, yep, one inch. Edit my passes back down to four. Calculate. And then we'll go to this one, one inch, edit my passes, back down to four, and calculate, reset, and preview all. There we go. And so now, if I really want to see, I mean, I can kind of see that it did it, but if it, all this other uh, waste is getting in my way, you can double click on a block of waste, and it'll, it'll delete it for you. So sometimes if you double click on the piece, it'll disappear. So you don't want to do that. You got to reset, preview again. So you got to be careful where you double click to get rid of waste. Some of the stuff I don't need to really do just to get a preview. There should be a button that says delete, delete waste, but I don't think there is one. No, I don't think there is one. So once you get clean enough and you can kind of tell, okay, yes, this looks good enough or it doesn't look good enough, um, then you can stop. You know, just, but you can see here, like where I had this here, where it went, went way in, you know, it, it couldn't get back in there. It couldn't get in there. So um, I think that looks... You know, it looks pretty good. Again, it's going to be sign foam. It's going to be painted white. Um, it's going to be sitting in front of the bride and groom. Inch thick. So it'll, it'll sit. It'll sit just fine. All right. So that's it for that. I think that's good. Next thing we got to do is we have to export these toolpaths. Um, so we hit the little save toolpath button. Now you can export them. Um, all in one file, uh, which I will do. Um, and also you have to pick a pro post processor. Um, I deleted all of the other post processors that I don't, that I'll never need. Um, you know, there's a, there's a hundred different post processors. So I've deleted it down to just my list of, of ones that I'll use. I use the, the laser with the wrapping, the, just the laser that doesn't have a Z. Um, wrapping um, for the rotary X to A or Y to A, depending on how I set up my, my thing. Either way, um, I leave these. And then the standard one for just regular machining stuff is this uh, Mach 3 arcs inch. I got rid of the millimeters because I just never do millimeter stuff. So I've got rid of all the millimeter stuff, um, just kept it super simple. So it's easy for me to pick. 
which which uh, post processor I need. All right, so that's it. Inside, outside, I'm gonna save. So I don't have anything yet. So for me, what I do is I'll go into my my projects and make a new folder. New folder. I'm gonna call this Mr. Mrs. Sign. Oops, well, I didn't see that. Mr. Mrs. Sign. Go inside there, and then we're gonna call it. I, usually, what I do is just to make it easier for me. I, I name. If I only have one or two, I'll do like one dash uh, one twenty five n mil. Right, so that way I know what tool to grab just by looking at the file name. Um, inside of the file name, if you look at the G code at the top of the block, it'll tell you what size material and what um, what size bit you used. But I kind of like it in the name of the file so that I know when I see um, before I've even loaded it what what size I need to load. Um, and I'll say save. And now I haven't saved this at all, so I can go up to save, and it'll put me right in that directory that I just created. So that's kind of handy. And then I'll just call this Mr. This is sign, and we'll save. All right, so then I usually go into my folders. I'll usually have my um, memory stick loaded in the in the laptop. I don't right now, um, but I would go here. I would take this file right here, drop it onto my memory stick, um, carry that to the machine, plug that into the machine, and I'll show you that um, when, when I get back to the live video. Um, so normally just drag and drop this to the memory stick. Or if your machine's connected to your internet or to your, you know, if you have a network set up, you have a shared drive, um, you can drag and drop this to the shared drive. However you get it to your machine, you got to get it to your machine. Um, all right, so that's it for this one, and uh, we'll pick this back up at the machine. All right, so here we are at the machine. I've got uh, my sign foam secured down. Um, with the, I use these uh, bench dogs and uh, these uh, Craig uh, bench dog clamps. Um, gives me a nice low profile to uh, so the bit doesn't run into them. Um, I need to load the job. I've got the bit loaded. I need to make sure my bit's going to go all the way through without the the bottom of the collet running into the material. So let me do that real quick. Yeah, so that's plenty. I got plenty of room. We're gonna go, actually, while I'm down there, I like to zero out at the bottom. And what I do is I'll, I'll, I know I'm going down an inch, so I will set that Z to be negative one. Then I'll drill in a little ways. So I don't want to go right on the very, very edge because um, because of the bench dogs. Um, if I go right on the edge, then the way I designed the, the program, it, it, it's going to cut into those. So I got to go in a fairly good distance so that it won't cut into those. And then I zero the X and the Y. I still got to load my program. And one thing I like to do is I like to make sure that it will fit in the material that I've set. So... So this is short by... Oh, probably six or seven inches. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down so that it will fit. All right, so I've got the job loaded. I am, I've got the bit zeroed. I zero my bit to the table. So I know I'm going through the material in an inch. And so I'll, I'll put the, the tip of the bit at the table and then I'll tell Mach 3 that's negative one inch, and that way, if, if my material is not exactly one inch thick, 
and that's okay because it'll go all the way through. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've cut a job and it hasn't gone all the way through and I have to re-zero and then find the right spot in the program to start to cut through the last little bit. Um, so this is the way I decided to do it for this um, and for a lot of my jobs just to make sure I get all the way through. Um, so I'm zeroed, I'm away from my, my clamps, I'm in probably half an inch on both sides. Um, I'm hoping that this job fits on, on this here. I've actually scaled it down just a little bit to try and get it to make sure it fits inside there. Um, and uh, let's get the uh, let's get the spindle started. Actually, let me make sure I'm tight. I don't think I tightened it. All right. And I've got the dust collection off um, just so that I can videotape the job. But normally I would have my dust collection on, um, sucking all this. Uh, dust up, but I'll probably just blow it, blow it out of the way, just for the sake of the video. Um, but normally I have dust collection, um, so let's get the bit started and let's get rolling. I I could hook up the computer to drive the, the spindle, but uh, I haven't done that yet. Put my glasses. All right, now what we're gonna do is start the job. will come out and that's okay over here so I use a stick Turn off the, uh, let's move the bit out of the way. Oh, 
blow some of the dust off here. I'll clean that up later. So here it is cut out all the way. Um, you can see I've got a little bit of these ridges that, that happen, especially with some of this thinner stuff as it moves around. Um, it, it creates these little ridges on the way down. But the nice thing about the sign foam is, is it, um, it sands very easily. So a couple passes of sandpaper and it'll be nice and, nice and smooth. I'm not sure if you can see that, but. Um, all right, so that's, that's, the, uh, that's the piece. A little bit of sanding, a little bit of cleanup a little bit of paint.